Visionaries, what's going on? Jason Osborne back again with another video. I apologize about the delay in the uploads over the past couple of weeks. I've just been super busy with my day job and also photography. And we're gonna get into that a little bit today. Today I'm gonna be talking about the five things that I wish I knew before becoming a wedding photographer. Coming up. So let's just get right into it. What are five things that I wish I knew before becoming a wedding photographer? Well, the first thing is, is that the day of the wedding, you are going to be so much more than just a photographer. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, you are going to be the day of coordinator. You're gonna be the therapist. You're gonna be the consoler. You're gonna be the, uh, you know, dress uh, flipper you're going to be the mirror you're going to be the flower pinner you're going to be all of those things other than just taking the pictures and it's amazing when you think about it because you were hired to photograph the wedding but to have a successful wedding you typically have to wear a couple of different hats throughout the day in order to keep things on track or on schedule or to keep your bridal party looking their best and these are all roles that are encompassed in being a wedding photographer. When I first started shooting weddings, I didn't realize this until a couple weddings in that I'm not only going to be taking photos and I'm gonna have to adhere to those different hats because in order for me to get good reviews, get the best pictures, I'm gonna need to be able to keep this wedding on track. I'm gonna have to be able to calm the bride down when she's feeling super stressed or anxious about the day or you know, make up for the coordinator when they're running behind and pin the flowers on the guys. These are all things that are part of being a wedding photographer. And of course, if you have assistance to help you out with those kinds of things, then it's awesome. But sometimes you might be shooting a wedding by yourself and you know, you'll find that you're gonna be running around doing a lot of other roles. And I wish I knew this before I got into wedding photography. I think it would have helped me understand what really goes into wedding photography and how challenging it can be but it also gives you a rewarding feeling once you do successfully complete some of those roles and you get the pictures that you need to get for your clients. So that's definitely number one. And going into that is number two, and that is personality and accommodation matter just as much as the technicalities of being a wedding photographer. And what I mean by that is that when I first started, I thought all I need to know is how to you know, shoot in certain sunlight or to get great reception photos, or to make sure I know how to adjust my camera settings on the go. But what goes so much more into wedding photography is what your personality is like as a wedding photographer. How are you interacting with your clients? How are they perceiving you? Do they feel like you're just a vendor, or do they feel like you actually wanna be there and you're actually capturing the photos that they care about? These are all things that can negatively or positively affect the review of you, and they can actually subconsciously improve how they view the pictures that you took for them. Personality matters a lot. A lot of times when you're reviewed as a wedding photographer, not only are you reviewed on your work, but you're reviewed on your work ethic and the personality that you show during the day. When other people are coming up to you, telling you you're doing such an amazing job or patting you on the back, thanking you for doing the things that they didn't expect you to do, that's letting you know that you're actually winning them over in the personality department because they haven't seen any of the photos yet. They just know that they like you as a person and that you're doing a great job. And that can really help you with your business and being a wedding photographer. When I first started shooting weddings, I didn't really understand that. I just knew that I knew how to take good pictures. But then growing into my role as a wedding photographer, I was really able to realize that yes, I'm gonna have to turn on the charms now and then. I'm gonna have to really showcase my personality. I'm an introvert you know, at heart, and I have to constantly step out of that box in order to make sure that my clients feel comfortable with me and they feel like they made the right choice with me. And sometimes it could be challenging, I'm not gonna lie, but at the end of the day, it always helps in my benefit. And number three, something that I definitely wish I knew before becoming a wedding photographer is that no other type of photography gig will burn you out faster. And I'm not trying to sound negative here, but it's, it's the absolute truth, okay? Um, when I get home from shooting weddings, multiple weddings, I am not trying to even look at my camera. I'm not trying to touch my camera. And the last thing I wanna do is even think about the wedding that I just shot or the next wedding that I have coming up. Sometimes I dread it. And it's something that I consistently try to tell myself I'm grateful for the opportunity 
and that I'm grateful to get the work in. But wedding photography can drain you. It can drain you physically and it can drain you mentally. And due to the things that I just talked about as far as being personable and then also wearing all the different roles, those are things that can add to that burnout. All the types of photography gigs, you know, you might be shooting um, family portraits or you might be doing maternity, you might be doing corporate headshots, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the types of photography gigs that are only going to be one or two hours and then you get to go home. Weddings can be all day affairs with multiple interactions, multiple people. And then on top of that, you're going to be standing on your feet for hours upon hours, getting in a quick bite to eat when everyone else is eating and then getting right back in it. And then sometimes the receptions are slow. No one wants to dance. People just want to sit at the table and talk. And then you're just sitting around wondering what you're going to be able to photograph for the next three hours because no one is actually on the dance floor having a good time. These are the types of weddings that can really drain you as a photographer. And it's happened to me. I'm actually going through it right now. It's probably why I look so tired right now. This month of April is going to be super busy for me. I'm actually shooting a wedding every single weekend besides one weekend when I actually get to go home to see my dad. And it's definitely tiring me out. I'm not going to lie. I'm just being completely transparent. Y'all see the Gucci bags under the eyes. I shot two weddings this past weekend and I'm going to be shooting another two weddings this weekend. And, you know, I just have to grit and bear it and go through it and just be happy that I'm making some money. But at the end of the day, there is no other type of photography gig that will burn you out faster. And sometimes you just have to really, you know, think about yourself, your mental, your physical, and ask yourself, is it worth it before you start booking all these weddings? Because when it comes down to shoot them, you can't pull out. It's something that you committed to, you have contracts signed, there are things that you have to honor. And you might end up kicking yourself in the butt when you realize how tired you are and how much more work you have to do. Another thing that I thought I'd never have to really experience as a wedding photographer is that you are going to be second guessed until you prove yourself. Whether it be from the bridesmaids or the wedding coordinator that just met you the day of, or um, you know the videographer, someone throughout throughout the day is going to second guess you until you prove that you know what you're doing and that you can handle the day. It happens to me all the time. Whether it be a overzealous bridesmaid who wants to be that perfect maid of honor or that perfect bridesmaid to make sure everything is going smoothly for her bride, I totally get it. But sometimes you just need to sit back and let the photographer do his thing. And usually it comes with me coming up with a pose they didn't think of or just setting something up that they agree with or maybe just how I control the atmosphere when we're doing group photos after the ceremony. Something usually ticks in someone's mind that, hey, this person knows what they're doing. I can sit back and relax and trust them. I don't have to babysit them. But until that happens, you are going to be looked at with the magnifying glass until you prove yourself. And sometimes it gets annoying. And when I first started wedding photography, I really didn't understand it. I used to get offended by it. But as you know, wedding photography can be expensive and it's also a super important day where you're only going to have one day and a lot of times one time to get certain shots. And everybody wants to make sure that the bride and groom and the wedding party and the day is going smoothly. And they're going to second guess anyone that they might initially think you know, they're just sleeping on them for some reason. And I don't understand what it is. I mean, you know, the bride and groom obviously had confidence to hire you. So why would anyone else sleep on you? But, you know, your job as a wedding photographer is to step up to the challenge and show that you actually know what you're doing. But that is definitely something I did not realize until I started wedding photography is how much you're going to be second guessed until you actually prove the day of that you know what you're doing. It can be annoying, but I'm always up for a challenge and I usually meet that challenge. And the fifth thing I would like to say that I wish I definitely knew before starting wedding photography is that the job is not finished even when the wedding is, all right? You get home, you gotta pack up your gear or you gotta recharge your batteries for the next wedding the very next day. Then you gotta back up all the photos and that's gonna take time. And then you have to, of course, edit the photos, then deliver the photos, then make any adjustments that the clients or the customers might be asking for. Hopefully you have some things in your contracts or your wording in your contracts that will limit some of those after or post wedding uh, details but still the work is still not done even when the wedding is. And you know, that's why wedding photographers tend to ch charge the way they do because they know that when they go home, they still have a ton of work to do to actually deliver the final result. You know, people get to go home with like, the DJ and you know, the caterers and the florists and the people who work at the venue. 
It's just another day when the night ends for them. But for wedding photographers, typically we have so much more that we have to do after the wedding that sometimes it just makes it seem like, you know, it's overwhelming. When is the job ever going to stop? And for a bonus thing that I wish I knew is that money is not everything. Sometimes you can see the red flags on the wall when you are approached to shoot a wedding, whether it's due to or disorganization, a huge wedding party, um, you know, uh, a, a client who's asking for way too much with not a budget to match. There are certain red flags that you're going to see that are going to make you feel that you should not shoot the wedding and you still might shoot the wedding because you need to get the money now obviously if you are a full-time photographer you're probably going to be shooting a lot more weddings or a lot more uh, photography gigs than someone who's doing it part-time on a side but at the end of the day money is not everything when it comes to wedding photography and if you're tired if you're burnt out if you feel like the wedding isn't going to be worth the hassle money isn't everything another wedding will come along unless you have bills to pay everyone has bills to pay you know or unless you feel like you absolutely need to get this wedding to make your rent or to make your quota for the month you know sometimes it's okay to say you know what thank you for your inquiry but unfortunately i'm booked up for the rest of the month or i don't think i'm going to be the right photographer for this gig or you know i appreciate the inquiry but i'm going to have to pass on this opportunity these are things that i've done before in the past because sometimes it's just not worth the hassle and the more you shoot weddings you're going to be able to pick up on those types of deals and those types of weddings that you just don't want to work that you just don't want to shoot not every wedding deserves your attention and your time and your skill set there's plenty of photographers out in the area that you're in that can shoot that wedding for that client and just because you turn it down doesn't mean that another client's not going to come to you that you will want to shoot and actually have a good time working sometimes when you take too many clients on you shoot too many weddings that you never really enjoyed working and then it can make you feel jaded and that can show through your work so the bonus tip or the bonus experience i would say is that i learned once i started shooting weddings that i wish i knew before was that money is in everything and it's definitely okay to turn down a gig or two I uh, still enjoy shooting weddings, don't get me wrong, this might have seemed a little pessimistic or you know, a little negative, but I'm just keeping it real with you guys, I'm just being totally transparent. You know, Shooting weddings and being a wedding photographer has its challenges, which is why a lot of photographers do not want to shoot weddings. There is a reason for that. And I'm not gonna just go ahead and sit here about all the, you know, the glorious and the glam about it, you know, about being a wedding photographer. There are some downsides to it too. If you are a new wedding photographer, now you have five things that you do know about that you might not have known about if I didn't make this video. Anyway, this is Jason Osborne. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any video ideas or anything that you want me to review or talk about, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll talk to you later. Peace.